Talking that shit. Your guest for tonight will be Joyce the Poet, Mr. Judy Hawkins, Erica Hawk, Troy Thompson, DJ D. Rail Baby, and the band Total Nightmare. And your host, give it up for Silky! Cold poets in the house. We got food in the back, cornbread, Kool Aid, uh, shrimp dip. We got lobster, uh, lobster. Still. You know what? Oh, they said they don't have it no more. They ate that. Oh. We got a lot. We got a lot. Y'all want to thank y'all for coming out. Give y'all stuff around. We got my trainer in the house, Floyd. Floyd oh, yeah. is the reason I was able to fit this suit, baby! Yeah. Yeah. Floyd, had, Floyd had me on them crunches, I'd be sweating, I'd be... Thank you, Floyd. <laughs> I can't hardly see y'all, but I hear you. Um, Alright, wait. First off, we're gonna jump it off like this. Do y'all do y'all believe in superheroes? Y'all believe in angels? Yeah. Y'all better believe it, because we got one in here tonight. And we're going to bring him out. That's our next guest. Ladies and gentlemen, coming to the stage, put your hands together and give it up for Miss Nefertiti Hawkins. What's going on, young lady? What's going on with you? This girl got a giant drink out here. <laughs> what is it? Apple juice? Yes. Oh, that's apple juice, y'all. I can smell it. I mean, little woo. Is that apple and, uh, apple and crown? Oh, okay. Just water it down a little bit. Now, uh, how you been? I know you. You've been, uh, traveling the world, right? Right, right. Can you tell the people where you've been? This past month. This past month. This, for your birthday. Y'all, it, it's been our birthday all month. The 11th, October 11th. Yes. Y'all give it up for the Libras out there, y'all. So, um, you've been celebrating your birthday all month. Yes, I have. You've been feeling good? Yes, I have. And, y'all, I, I brought her on the show because she is a cancer survivor. And I'm telling you, I'm telling you, she's been going strong. She's uh, she's 56 right now. Oh, oh my! And she's been going strong since she's 19. Now I'm just playing. She's 32. Oh no! Oh, she, oh you don't tell me. Can't tell me. But no, she's she's she beat she beat up cancer. That's why I say she's a superhero. Yes. And uh, you want to tell me a story about cancer? Oh, okay, let's start about when you were in high school. High school. Yeah, when you were college. Oh, college. I'm sorry. She found out in high school, but she waits to tell people in college. No. So, so I'm like, no. Okay, I was. Mm, I won't tell my age. I was a sophomore at Southern University when I discovered that I had a Wilms tumor. Mm -hmm. And a Wilms tumor, a little bit of background about that, um, it's only in babies from the ages of zero to three years old. So by me being the age that I were at that time, I was the first uh, person in the United States to have that type of tumor. Mm -hmm. Wilms tumor was, um, 
it's on your kidney. So they did not know whether um, I had had it all those years. Mm -hmm. So that's um, basically the type of cancer it was. So it was very rare. So what they had to do was they had to send it out and just different testing throughout the world to see how to treat me. Mm -hmm. Yes. So where did it go? What throughout the world? Where did it go? Uh, St. Jude's, Texas Children, all the um, all the medical facilities within the U U.S. and then they t did testing outside of the country, and they still couldn't de determine why that I had it at that age. So mm -hmm. they just went on it. So you were nineteen. Something like that. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> <laughs> she was around that age. Somewhere. Around that age. And so, like, um, so what was the process? I mean, like, what happened? Did they um, did they test it other places and then they they figured out that you had it? Well, yes. Well, what happened was when I initially had the surgery, when they knew that it was a wind stormer, mm -hmm. so they had to remove my right kidney. They sent it. At that time, I was in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Cause uh -huh. I was Sophomore Southern University, so they tested and they sent it to MD Anderson here in Houston, Texas. Oh, okay. And so then they discovered, okay, this is a Wilms tumor, right. which is only in children, so they had to send it to Texas children. And so at that point, we went through multiples of treatments and testing to figure out uh, how to treat it. Right. Because I was at the age that I was at that time, so okay. they didn't have a clue. So what happened when it came to over here? You followed it? I mean, I guess you had here to. Here in right? Houston? Right. Um, eventually, because uh -huh. I stayed at St. Jude. Where was that? Tennessee. Oh, okay. Yes. So I so stayed at St. Jude. Um, they didn't have a St. Jude nowhere close to you in Baton Rouge? No. no what I about Houston? Houston? No, I decided to stay. My parents decided for us to stay out there in Tennessee. Okay. So what was your journey like to St. Jude? Oh, the journey to St. Jude, it was miraculous. Um, we had never been to Tennessee mm -hmm. before, and I remember um, going there. We was going through a whole lot, just trying to figure out what was going on, what to do. Um, you know, my parents didn't know as far as the treatment go. You know, mm -hmm. they're getting ready to treat me, don't know how to treat me. So, so was I, it like full-blown or what? No, no. We caught it in the first stage. Uh -huh. So when they caught it in the first stage and they froze the cells, so it wasn't in the fourth stage at all. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. <clears throat> Tell me about the part <laughs> when you had an appointment with St. Jude and y'all didn't know how y'all was going to get everything going. That's right. Uh, we was... Um, I'm from a small country, country town called Four Corners, Louisiana. Mm -hmm. And I remember that week when we left St. Jude and came back home on our journey, um, we had a revival there and everyone was praying over me and all of that, uh, getting us prepared and ready for the journey to go to St. Jude to get the treatment started. And it was real late at night. I'm thinking it was like uh, maybe 12, 1 o'clock. Mm -hmm. When we arrived at St. Jude, we drove down there, and uh, we didn't know, you know, where we was going, what we was going to do. So when we got there, <clears throat> when we got there, I would never forget, it was an older man. He was a security guard. Now, mind you, it's like 12, 1 o'clock at night. Uh -huh. uh, we're, we're not knowing that St. Jude closes at 5, 6 o'clock, normal business hours. So the man, he was there. He was in the security uh, booth. He was with all smiles and welcoming us. He was waiting on us to get there. So, you know, my father and my mother was like, okay, you know, we don't know, you know, how to check in this whole process because we wasn't due until the next day. Oh. So he was like, okay, Miss Doris is in the inside waiting for you guys to come in. So, you know, we went in and everything, and once we got there, this older lady, black, heavy set, beautiful smile, big curls. I can remember her like yesterday. So, so why? I mean, uh, if they was there, and at they, one o'clock in the morning. At one o'clock, okay, okay, go ahead. Go yes, yeah, so we walked in, and I can remember it just like this light is shining in my eyes right now. I can remember her beautiful smile, and she was in the office, and you know she welcomed us, she greeted us, hugged us, and everything. She had all my bands and paperwork, and the hotel stay the the whole nine waiting for us. So she checked us in and everything, and 
she gave uh, my parents encouraging words. Mm -hmm. And so then we left, we went to the hotel, they waved goodbye to us and, you know, gave us, um, you know, uh, was just going over the different things at St. Jude. So we checked in the hotel and we woke up that morning, we went back to St. Jude yeah. to check in and I had everything, my documentation. So then as I was checking in. So they kind of prepped you for? Yes, yeah, she did. Okay. Yeah, she prepped prepped us for what was about to take place uh -huh. on the next day. But basically, she was just really encouraging, uh -huh. you know, calming us and making sure that the state that that was, what we was getting ready to be prepared for was going to be all right, that God had us. You know, uh -huh. so she kept making sure, you know, she kept saying, God have you. You know. So did she say, Shad, baby? No, well, she said all of that. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Shad, it's going to be all right. Yeah. <laughs> So the next day when we got there, and um, I had all my bands and checked in and everything, and so the administration people that were there in the office, they was amused on how I got all of those. How you got your prep. my bands? How it was checked in and everything uh -huh. because they didn't have Miss uh, Miss Doris work there as an there. employee. So then at that time, you know, we kind of went backwards and forwards letting them know who Miss Doris was. Uh -huh. You know, she was there. Kind of painted a picture for them. Exactly, exactly. And as they well as the security. And they couldn't understand that. And then at that moment, we realized that that was live angels on this earth. Oh! <laughs> at that moment. Something touched me. <laughs> Y'all don't feel that? So I can actually witness, me and my mother and my father, we can actually witness that we have experienced a lot of angels here on this earth. I know that's right. Yes. Come on, y'all. Give it up for it, y'all. <laughs> Woo! I ain't going to cry in front of y'all. In front of y'all, I'm going to wait until I can give it a call. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> Stop, boy. Boy. Okay. So then at that moment, you know, we knew that God had us. Yeah. You know, so uh, we went in and the doctors, and when the doctors came, they they was just amused because everything was gone. The cancer was gone. They did all the tests. Amen. They couldn't find it. Everything was gone. So they really, at that moment, I was fine. You know, mm -hmm. my parents was fine because the angels, yeah. you know, made sure that we were all right. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so the doctors, they were just like, we don't know what to do at this moment, you know, so then they began the treatment and I still, I, I still was, I was fine with it mm -hmm. because I knew my body was healed at that moment, mm -hmm. that night, yes. So you, you had like a, you had kids at this point? Yes, I had a little girl. My little girl, she was my strength. Uh -huh. She was a couple of years old. Um, of course, they told me that I couldn't have any more kids because um, my kidney, I only have one kidney, 17 years strong with one kidney. Uh, they said maybe a couple of years that, you know, I would make it. Of course, no children, no more children or anything. I have a 13-year-old daughter. Now. After that? Yes, after that. Yes. Hey, man. Oh, Come on, y'all. Mm, yes, mm, so mm. at that time, my little girl, she was through the whole chemo uh, process. I didn't have to go through every radiation, but I went through a lot. You know, I went through the chemo. I went through um, blood transfusions, giving my own self uh, insulin shots, the whole nine, but I didn't have to go through radiation. So, uh, but my little girl, at the time, she was my strength. She put it. Yeah, she always used to sing, uh, God's great joy. I have joy, joy, God's great joy. So that, that alone, you know, gave me a peace of mind every time I went to have my treatments done. Oh, man. <laughs> man. Oh, shock and boo. Well, look, man, I, I really appreciate it. You sharing your story because you you never really shared this story. No, no, I never did. Until uh, now. Until now. Until yes. now. Right here on this show. <laughs> talking that chat. Go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But um, yeah, that, that's yes. that's that's yes. perfect. And yes, yeah, so like, like I told you, the reason why I didn't share my story uh, as being a teenager and a pre-teenager mm -hmm. at the time, because when people hear cancer and oh, you have cancer, is that's the pitiness, and you know, I feel sorry. Oh, 
all of that good stuff. And that's just not my personality. That's right. not who I am. So I didn't want people to feel, oh yeah, cancer, blah, you know. Yeah. Pray for, I mean, prayer is good. Don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> but I didn't want that because I'm the life for the party. I mean, right. you know, I'm the upgoing person or whatever so I didn't want to tell my story but I used to be a testimony to others like one on one but mm -hmm. as far as speaking out publicly about it no I didn't want that and and I used to tell my mother all the time you know when God says so then yeah. I'll be I'll be a, a good mom. Mm -hmm. you sure live the life of the party because I met you I met you where in the middle of the ocean. In on a cruise. On a little We were cutting up by sure was. We was karaoke and we was eating four o'clock in the morning. Just that. man, we had a bow. A bow. This young lady, she she's so strong, she's a superhero. She'd have been through this, she'd have been through that. And she also got organizations. Yes, that I'm affiliated with. That you're affiliated with. Can wanna tell us about that real quick? Yes. After um, I went through the cancer stage of my life. I always wanted to do um, something positive and give back, especially to the female community. So I was um, home in Louisiana and I started an organization called Independent Divas. So I was the founder, CEO, president of that social club. And what we did was we gave fundraisers mm -hmm. uh, to those families in need for the holidays. Oh, yeah. We did scholarships for children. We did, we went to uh, nursing homes. We just gave back and I yeah. wanted to be a part of that, you know. Um, and then I met a phenomenal uh, visionary guy, Dr. Wells. Uh -huh. and. You know, we both shared our stories. We both have a lot in common. So I became a solemn partner of his company, um, as well as his overseer for Empire Entertainment Corporation yeah. out in Lafayette, Louisiana. Um, I also sit on the board of directors for my family uh -huh. company, the Lockett family. Um, so I just, I just been going. I'm a single mother, two daughter college, you know, put it through college, you know, I have a 13-year-old. Um, then I came here to Houston, Texas. I came back to Houston, and now I am active. Well, before that, I am also a member of the Eastern Star at Home, so I'm very active in the community. Yeah. I'm very active, you know, because I will always want to get back. I am that. <laughs> yes. So now I'm here in Houston. Uh, I'm working as well as going backwards and forwards. And so now I have became a member of uh, Street Lords Nation. Uh -huh. um, What's that? Street motorcycle. Club. Oh, you ride a bike? Oh, in the house, Street Lords Nation. From um, Independent Divas in Louisiana because I felt that at the time that I was going through the cancer and mm -hmm. I wanted to get back to my individual community. So now here in Houston, I'm just low key. I'm yeah. the active secretary of the Jewel Social Club here. Uh -huh. yeah. So, yes, yes, I have my motorcycle family in the house, street lords, side swipers, Jews, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, so I'm, I'm doing my thing. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm going to ride with y'all one day. That's right. Yes. But I'm going to have to get one of them. Wide ones with the three oh, wheels. Oh, with three yeah, wheels? Yeah, because I, I can't really you, 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 fall. You I, I can't <laughs> fall down. <laughs> My knees ain't But that's how I make sure you do it. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. even one of them vests. That's it. Straight. Vests, a helmet, some knee pads, some gloves, some knuckles. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, okay. I, I can't just. No, you just. Don't go get none of that no, yet? No, no. Okay, I'm just going to put that on Lil. Yeah. 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 All right, young lady. Yes. Well, it was good. It was a pleasure. I'm glad that you had me on the shirt. Show. Oh, yeah, yes, Chef. Awesome. Look, hey, she from Louisiana, so we should have put on that accent when she came out there. No. I should have started talking just like that yeah, the whole like time. Hey, hey, how you doing, baby? Yeah, baby. <laughs> that's, that's my girl. Yeah. Here you so, go, baby. Come here, come here, Shay. Shay, baby. Right. Give it up, y'all. Give it up. 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 Give
New Community Construction, the way we build your community. We build and renovate homes in our community. We build your future. New Community Construction, the way to build your new community. Next guest we're gonna bring up. Hey y'all having a good time? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay, that's good. Next guest we're gonna bring up is my main man. Cat I've been knowing this cat for like 17 years. And uh <laughs> we used to work together. Y'all give it up, put your hands together for DJ D Captain. Oh, okay, okay. Y'all hear me good? Oh, yeah, I hear me real good. That's good. Now, DJ Derail. What's up, man? How long you been DJing? Uh, shit. It was like six. You got one of them stories. I was like six years old. And nah, that ain't me, man. Oh, okay. I, was, I was a late bloomer. I, ain't, I started. It's only been like 10 years. Oh, okay. 10, 10, 11 years. Now, that light is like right here. It's all right. That's, that's like, the chicken light. You know, the light is Popeye's and like. Got the chicken on, keep I, it got, I got you. That's it. Yeah. That's it. Chicken still be cold, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you've been DJing for 10 years. Yeah, man, 10 years. And you uh, graduate from TSU? TSU. TSU. Oh, uh -huh. TSU. Third one. Oh, you know? So what, what's the company you work with? Signature Events. Signature Events DJ and Event Production. First of all, you know who I work for. You tell you been telling them that used to work for us. Go ask me. The people don't know the people. Don't, the people, okay, signature event, signature events, DJ and event production, everyone. Pretty much what we do, we specialize in DJ and weddings. We like to see that happy time between couples get together. We just like to bring that fun and that passion to that dance flow. Get it popping, twerking. In the wedding dress, oh, don't get to work in the wedding dress. Hike it up a little bit and put your flats on and shake it. Okay. You remember the request you got from the bride? Uh, ask your DJ if he got little Ronnie. Throw that in the circle. Throw in the circle. I got it. She threw it in a circle. In a circle, a cylinder, a square, a high, whatever shape. <laughs> it was in there. Hey man, we we used to, we used to do some magic, man. We, it was me and you. It was this, this my MC, man. We used to. We used to get it. Me and Debbie. Silk it. We used to silk it. We used to, boy, we made magic. We made magic. Magic and had them well. At a bad way, we made. Yeah, you know, oh, we didn't think it was about to go down. And it still went down. You know? Oh, yeah. And, uh, so your company, how can we reach y'all? Oh, man, you can Facebook, Instagram, Tumblr. YouTube, just, just type in signature events. And when you type in events, it's not E V E N T S. Nah, we had to we had to keep it gangster. Come on. So it's E V E N T X. So it's like event Texas. But you still say events. It's just spelled with the X at the end. That's right. Keeping it gangster. That's right. Yeah, classy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna tell y'all, DJ Durrell, he kinda taught me everything I know. But I, I do know a some more tricks now. Nah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? See, he don't know he taught me. I was just watching. And he he's so cold with it. It's like well, he, he be sweating all the time. He, he sweat good. And, uh, so I'm like, come on, Darrell. He's he wiping sweat, scratching, mixing it up. So I'm watching this cat. I'm like, man, this cat is cold. And then he was like, man, you ever thought about DJing? I was like, no. Why would I, you know, I'm MC, why would I DJ? Man, you gonna try it. I was like, oh, okay. Next thing I look up, he got some equipment. <laughs> <laughs> I had some equipment, man. I had to try. I was trying. That's all I was doing. But I, I learned from the best. Right here. Y'all give it up. Give it up for DJ.
thank you for coming out, young man. Yes, we man. couldn't have done it without you. I appreciate you bringing me back, man. You know what I'm saying? Ain't sanctioned in a minute. Y'all give it up for these days. So, coming up to the stage, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to bring a poet to the stage. Put your hands together and give it up for Bucky the Poet! the interstate, her eyes glued straight ahead. There's a hazmat truck of mama aching for a motel bed. She's crossed the high Sierra since this day's forgotten start, but the weight behind her chassis life compared to a heart. Because there's a baby back in Tulsa, a household full of bills, and an absent drunk ex-husband with a pocket full of bills. So grandma's watching Scooter so that she can hit the road, bringing home the bacon while she's bringing home a load. And she's taking that load down a heavy road that make most any man tougher. But when it comes to love, she has that truck. trouble. Yeah, it's a long, hard haul from here. Oklahoma is full of pain and a strange aroma. It's a powdery taste of the non-dairy cream. It's the vulcanized skid on a broken dream. It's the wine on the grooves and the thread of stall. The hazardous material she'll always haul. And the strength that she carries while she's hauling her load, shifting down the overdrive and tearing up the road. So when this miss comes round for a kiss, the sun you better puff her. But when it comes to love, she's a hazmat trucker. You can give her a line and she'll give you some time, but don't play her for a sucker. But when it comes to love, she's a hazmat trucker. New Community Construction the way we build your community. We build and renovate homes in our community. We build your future. New Community Construction, the way to build your new community. Shows, Erica Badu, uh, a, whole, a whole lot of stuff he could take. But y'all, I want y'all to put y'all hands together and give it up for Choice! Oh, yeah. Okay, all right. How y'all doing? Y'all all right? All right. All right. All right. Check this out. My name is Choice. Uh, say, just jump into it. Okay, here we go. Uh, I'm, I'm from the country, right? So, uh, I used to go to church like seven days a week, and my grandfather used to sing a, a song in church. He used to go, uh, let's see, I shall not, I shall not be moved, I shall not, I shall not be moved just like a tree that's planted by the water. Arthur, oh, I shall not be moved. You're going to see what you want to see. Find truth in what you want to believe in the research you choose to support what you see. So name a scroll that didn't roll from the ballpoint perspective of a man. Name a belief that doesn't have to pay any bills. Yes, the Sabbath was on a Saturday. Jesus was of color, but he shed red blood for every multicultural sin. Christianity isn't a white belief. It's the right belief for imperfect people. Brothers, we treat our sisters like urinals and wonder why our seeds grow into weeds. Monetary deductions from your paycheck is not child support. Time is. We got side pieces trending. 
More basketball goals than life goals. More dope boys than doctors value a dance over a degree. If I ain't talking about nobody, I'm talking about me. My gluttony is your adultery. My sloth is your slander. It's easy to say I'm not perfect, and since all sins were equally crucified, you shouldn't cry crucify from a ball or tomb. But at the same time now, Judas didn't go and write 30 pieces. After getting his 30 pieces on how him and his sins should be allowed to wed in all 50 states. Now, I ain't standing here saying that I'm all the way right and that you're all the way wrong. But I know it's way wrong to make wrong all the way right, and if that ain't right, who gonna let God know he got it wrong? We so quick to blame others for our messes, but it was us who walked with God in the cool of the God. Us is who he put to sleep and pulled perfect out of perfection. Us is who disobeyed. Us is who bit into the ripple effect of being enslaved because dominion over everything wasn't good enough. Now, hey, close the lid on that and let it cycle. Put down your distractions, my peoples, and pick up your Bible. The preacher. The preacher just want money, and the deacons, the deacons ain't right, and the sisters can tell you everything wrong about everybody. So now you have your excuse to leave church. Because you don't need church to have a relationship with God, which gave birth to your Facebook post religion. Now it's post pardon my depression. The spiritual lactose intolerance was milked from the belief of mixed verses, but never got around to reading the whole chapter, because the book was entirely too long to have faith. In the face, sir, just because you share a meme doesn't mean that you study to show thyself approved, screaming only God can judge me. Like the sacrifice at the cross made God soft when really you should fear that he isn't fair, but just, I mean, just look at Moses. He let him make it, but he ain't let him make it in. So the next time one of those overnight conscious gurus ask you who did we serve before slavery, tell them simple, the same God we served before Egypt was Egyptian, let's decrypt the encryption serpent say, I said, serpent say, you Christians Bible subscription been changed to keep you slaves in change translation. Did he really say you couldn't eat of that tree? Or is he just trying to keep you people asleep so y'all can't be gods like me? But snakes fail, I said snakes fail to tell the reason why they crawl is because the creator said all gods got to stand on their own two feet. So you're going to see what you want to see. Find truth in what you want to believe in the research you choose to support what you see. But as for me, I shall not, I shall not be moved. I shall not. I shall not be moved just like a tree that's planted by the water. So I shall not be moved. Right, now, that, oh, this. Say no, this this not no big boy kind of. I'm just right, sitting this yeah. thing and fighting. You ain't gonna see me no more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah give me a Okay, cool. Um, now that was that was deep. Now I want to know, cause I just like everybody else. How do you how do you first picture picture a poem, and 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 start painting those beautiful words like that? Well, the, how it comes to me is like in spurts. I'll be honest with you. Like a poem could take me an hour, or it could take me three years. Oh, okay. Because it, it'll come like, okay, I get a piece, then I might get another piece, and another piece, and then before I know I got a whole bunch of pieces that I have to put together and edit. Wow. So it, 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 could, it, it varies, man, it uh -huh. varies. And I, I get a lot of my inspiration in the shower or in the bathroom. You know what? what I'm saying? Hey, that's the thinking. That's the thinking. That's the throne. You get most of your good thoughts in the bathroom. I, I, well, I, you know, and on the toilet. That's what you get. <laughs> you get your, you get your Facebook in. Uh -huh. You get your uh, 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 Instagram in. And you, and you get, get your, your Twitters and, and your poems. All on the toilet. All on the toilet, man. That's, <laughs> all that's, all that's, the best that's thinking. deep thinking. That's deep thinking, right there, man. So, like, how many pieces do you have? You know. No, I don't. I don't. Uh, maybe, maybe. More than, okay, let's shoot, shoot some numbers out there. More than ten. Yeah. At higher. Least, at least twenty. 
You got to at least keep 20. Yeah, okay. So, 40? Yeah, right there. Maybe a little bit below, between you, 20 and 40. Okay. Do you have a favorite? Oh, uh, no, 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 no. Oh, yeah, I, I take that back. I do have a favorite. Which one is it? My wife's. The one I wrote, wrote, wrote oh, for my wife. Oh, wife, y'all. Come on, come on, come on. So what is it about? Can you can you say it without saying it? Uh, can I say it without saying it? Oh, you can say it if you want. All right, I'll say it at the end. Okay, cool. Okay. All right. Yeah. So you got the one for your wife. Uh, -huh. uh I know, I know, I heard you a while back, and uh, it's a whole bunch of people got these, and I think you started it. I don't want, I don't, I don't want to. The. Uh, Gorilla? Yeah. You started that, right? Yeah. Can you do it? <laughs> Can you explain it? Well, I don't want okay. you to do it, but right. I just want you to explain it. All right, basically, um, back back uh, when I first started, around like 2008, uh, there's this place called the Shadow Bar, and uh, this guy uh, named Seven uh, ran it. It's Poetry, Poetry Lounge, Houston, Houston Poetry Lounge, whatever, Houston Poetry Lounge, I think it is. Um, and it, it, Live spot in Houston, mm -hmm. right at the top, and probably still is. But uh, man, it, you had to have a lot of energy. Yeah. A lot of energy on, on that stage. You couldn't come half step. It was like the Apollo. Yeah. You're gonna get booed if you didn't. Yeah. Like okay. So my second time up there, I, I basically got booed off the stage. What? Yeah, I got. You? Booed. Yeah. Come on, man. You my, my leg. My, what? Second. Poem I ever wrote, you know what I'm saying? Oh, it was it, 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 it was horrible. It was horrible. Yeah, I, I wasn't doing no editing. I just threw something together. Just threw, threw it together. And uh, man, I said, man, I gotta come up with some fire right quick. And then I started uh, thinking about it, like, what, what can I do? I, I gotta, I gotta go hard like a gorilla or something mm -hmm. like that. And I started piecing it together. And then before you know it, I had a whole poem. And then. Other, pe uh, other poets, that's when a lot of love was on the scene. A lot of poets was just showing me love and uh, putting, uh, uh, putting a gorilla poem together. The first one who did one was Jim. Mm -hmm. And then once Jim did it, other people started doing it. Jim, uh, Pinky, Pinky had, had a, a fire one. Uh -huh. uh, Khalid had one. Um, who else? Uh, Lero had one. Uh, man, it's, it's a whole, it was a whole bunch of people. Yeah, poets. I remember. Joe P, Rain. Uh, basically, if you name them, they had they they had one. It wasn't like okay, Chris. Chris <laughs> as a matter of fact, what, what Chris, oh, yeah, Chris had one, uh, and it wasn't on, wasn't on those they like like look at me type thing. It right. was like look look at us type yeah. thing. You know, yeah. we we it was a lot of love on the scene, and it, it was a beautiful thing, man. Like yeah, it, man. I mean, you know, man. Me and you, we we kind of go back, man. We go <laughs> we go back like uh. Peas and cornbread. Yeah, man. peas and cornbread. Now we used to go to the spot called Azuz. <laughs> what, what's the memory you remember? Yeah, look, look, he gonna bring this up, okay? What's the memory you remember about Azuz? Uh, hey, you better keep that thing in that box. Let him pull that. Is it in the box? I got a lot of them in there. Hey, don't let him pull it. This is the pie paper. I'm trying to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> tell, tell, tell him that story. Tell him okay, that story. what had happened was is back in back in the day. This is back when silky was silky. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, uh, I had uh, I had went. Uh, this is back before my wife. I had took, took long time ago. Long 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 time long, ago. long time. Ago. <laughs> I had took. Uh, I was gonna say young lady, but no. Uh, I had took this one female to uh, 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 to Zool's, right? And this Zool's is a, a open. Uh, was it open mic? Yeah, open mic. Open mic. But I wasn't gonna spit that night. Um, uh, and you know, I had just met. I said, man, let's just go over there and just chill um, at this open mic. And okay, she she came with me or whatever, like on a little date or whatever you wanna call it. And then, you know, I see Silky, Silky, hey, what's up? You know, introduce uh, Silky. Silky said, yeah, I'm going to go up there. I said, all right, man. Hey, you got you to gotta, gotta check out my boy. I told him, right? Mistake one. <laughs> uh, Silky got up there. He started, he hit a few notes, and then he started going into it, right? You know, just playing, just playing. I'm the hard playing, sweating. All of a sudden, I look up, my date on the stage with him. I was like, what the heck, man? I'm talking about it ain't like just dancing. And she wasn't right just now. dancing. She I'm was talking, like, uh, 
She was like, I was the pole. Right. It's like he, he was the pole and she was a stripper. <laughs> and I looked at him like, like, nah, hey man, shoot. I, you know what? Uh, it's that movie, The Mac. The Mac, that's that the old school movie. Yeah. When he it goes up to the other pimp talking about, hey man, you chose me. <laughs> that's what it was. I was like, God. She almost got left. Oh yeah. She almost got. If my brother wasn't with, you know, uh, her partner, she would have got left. But and, and that was not my fault, man. It was. It was that harmonica. That was that. That's what I'm talking. I'm trying harmonica. to tell you. Cause we we talked afterwards. Hey, hey, man, I dapped you up. I was like, shoot, man, you got it, man. I, I, that was the first and last time that happened. You know what I'm saying? Step my game up. You know I had to do background checks on me, man. You ever dance on any pose? <laughs> you dance on any pose that you like harmonica. You know? <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, we used to hang tough back in the days, man. But look, I want to thank you for coming. Oh, don't, don't. Yeah, people got their women up here. Uh, <laughs> but that's, that's why my wife is at home right now. That, right, she I, ain't I told her not on. Um, I got oh, come things. on, man. You ain't bring her. Not, heck no. Fool me once. You know what I'm Fool me twice. You know what I'm saying? me. Now, she at home with my son, man. Uh, put, uh, oh yeah, yeah, you do got a son. Mm -hmm. So, how old is he? He is about to turn two in February. Any more coming? I got one coming in December. What? Yeah. Ooh, congratulations, yeah. baby. Yeah. Man. Oh, man. Yeah, wait, so didn't you just get married like seven months ago? No. Nah, <laughs> how long have you been married? I've been married since uh, 2014. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, Damn, you good in there. <laughs> February 18. <laughs> cool, <Yeah>. man. <laughs> it's gonna be on TV, right? <laughs> yeah. Whoa. What the heck? Say, man. Is this a scary clowns, man? Hey, man, play your own model. <laughs> <laughs> That's your partner over there, I, man. I hope. That's your partner. <laughs> <laughs> y'all give it up for choice, y'all. <laughs> oh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. You got to do your poem, man. Okay, the poem for my wife. By, All right. by his wife. All right, let's see if I can remember. I bet it, huh? Um, I can remember when we first started talking, right? I was telling my friends about her. I was telling them how she was this and I, how she was that. When they said, choice, that sounds good and everything, though, dog. But you know what we want to know. <laughs> what she looked like, right? I told them to pitch perfect. You see, this is a biblical love. This is an ancient love. I shall build monuments in her image. So let it be written. From this time forth and even forevermore, woman, you are my reflection. May my every verb windex the vision of your future. You can use my newspaper wording to clear the residual streets of their habitual lies, random fact. Anyone can shine in the summer, but I come bearing shade from July feet. You see their content and consolation. The constellation mindsets lack the gravity of reality to know that all you really need is my moonlight to navigate your way through life's nightmares, random fact. A heartbeat slip. Random fact, baby, I found a good thing. Let me bridge over your troubled water. You see, it was your faith in me that made me whole, exercising my demons into the sea of don't worry about it. Just, just keep pressing on reverse interpretation. When you touch the hems of my garments, you cause my inner swine to cliff dive. I have a legion of reasons why you shouldn't leave the well until I have an opportunity to drink. My cup runs over in your eyes. No matter how hard I try, I can't live off this bread alone. So let's cast our nets on the other side. Reap the bounty, feed the multitudes, and I so solemnly swear. On the karma of our exes, let your eyes bear witness to the news of your spiritual boat as it's arrived. I will construct the foundation on which I will slingshot the Goliath task of being the father to our son. I'll show him how to stay afloat when things seem to get holy. No need to catch ghosts on the back. On your Sodoms, I said, don't look back 
on your Sodom's, your Gomorrah's. Or maybe your Gomorrah's have already been forgotten and the haters are supposed to be soft. Through your touch, I can see love again. With the promise of rainbows not to flood my heart with doldrums of pain, our blessings come two by two. Look down at your feet. Notice that I'm not muddy. When I say dry land, woman, I mean. Random fact. I exhale when you inbox. Inhaling the clouds of your past away, can I filter your future until it's pure me? If asked choice, who is your latest? I'd say you. Well, who is your greatest? I'd say you. Well, who can't you stand? I'd say you. Well, who do you hate? I'd say you. Well, who do you love? I'd say you. Well, who can't you be without? I'd say you, because your presence is a warm presence of Alzheimer's. I can't remember any woman before you lift every voice and sing. An angel has captured the king, lift every voice and sing. Oh Lord, an angel has captured the king. Who needs freedom? Choice. Thank you. Coming to the stage, ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Floyd Thompson. Ah. <laughs> Am I gonna stick in this chair too? You might. <laughs> <laughs> I'm all right, man. Y'all, Floyd is my trainer, y'all. I'm not even going to say a beast, he's a killer. <laughs> uh, now, I've been knowing Floyd for about 18, 19, 20. Oh, God, slow down. <laughs> about 30 years. <laughs> <laughs> Since he was a little young whippersnapper. Now, Floyd is, uh, he always been super fast. Then let me tell y'all about Floyd. Okay, after school, we'd be like, oh, we finna go to some girl's house. we catch the bus. Floyd, run. To wherever he going, that's how fast he got. And I'm, and be, being that fast, matter of fact, I'm gonna let him tell you. How, now, how you get that fast and just just being that fast and able to take it further? What, what, can you tell us about that? Um, I was fortunate enough to come out of high school being ranked um, number three in the in, in the U.S. Um, I was from out of Texas. I ended up um, going to uh, Baylor University where I graduated from there, and I had the opportunity to move on to that next level, which is the professional level, which I was there for about 13 years, doing that before I was about six and a half years. Ooh. And they say you can cook, too. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I, also, when I was living in, at the current time when I was running, I was living in Los Angeles, and I also went to culinary school at, at the same time. So how about this? You cooking something. You run out of you run out of uh, okra. You got to run to the stove. Now this guy can run to the stove, get a pack of okra, and come back before the rice burn. <laughs> <laughs> Grease ain't hot enough to fry fish yet, boy. I'm telling you, quick. <laughs> but um, yeah, he got his own business. He got his own company. Yeah. Tell, tell us about that. One. Uh, I'm currently located in Kima, Texas. Uh, my company's name is uh, Fit Sports Performance. And you know my job title is a, a speed, strength, and conditioning coach. But on the on the flip side, I also uh, train. I'm a personal trainer as well. So that's what I kind of do to my my normal humans <laughs> during the daytime. <laughs> if I work with my athletes, yes. Uh oh. So you work with professional athletes also? I do work with some professional athletes as well. So yeah, it's pretty fun. And uh, me myself, I attend your classes. And I also DJ at yes, the classes. Yes, yes. And uh, Thursdays, please come out. <laughs> Thursdays, Fit Camp goes live. Yes. And uh, I, I don't feel that the classes is too hard. Mate, well, you know, I'm a former athlete myself. <laughs> but me, myself, I don't feel the classes are too hard for other people. It, it kind of, it's kind of a continuous burn to where you, you'll see results. In a in a matter of weeks, and, and is that on is that on purpose? Is that by design or what? Well, yeah. I mean, for my fit camp classes, I kind of design those classes to the point where you can kind of see exactly where your fitness level is. And then, like I tell people all the time, if you allow yourself to at least see me once a week, that's fifty two that's fifty two times a year you'll you'll be able to see me and work out with me for an hour. Uh, that 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 one hour of that that, that day that that session. 
and you will start to continuously see results in you. Your fitness level will increase mm -hmm. versus, you know, it, you know, and I, t I try to encourage people to continue to come every week because when you miss a week, boy, it's, it's like you're starting all over again. Right, right. And you can feel it, too. Oh, yeah. And he will make you feel it. <laughs> you will go to sleep or I will put you to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> now, I'm, I'm telling you, Floyd, he got some, he got some workouts to wear. Sometimes you look at him like, man, ain't no way in the world I can do this. But if you keep doing it, you'll be able to do it with no problem. Oh, yeah. No yeah. problem. And I, I, could, I could touch my toes now, Floyd. Oh, yeah. Uh, all, and it's all because of you. <laughs> now stand it up and sit down. Uh, uh, huh? <laughs> 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 well, going to put me out there like that, huh? I can touch my toes right now. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> but, y'all... Yeah, Floyd, uh, tell, tell them the name of your company. Uh, my name of my company is Fit Sports Performance. It's located in Kima, Texas. It's literally in League City, Texas. Mm -hmm. but yeah, Very nice facility. You can come up in there, and it's, it's like your, your your third home. Yep. Other, 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 than, other than your house and the church house. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, there could be some praying going on there. Uh-oh, Lord. <laughs> Call on Lord all day up there. <laughs> oh, Lord. Exactly. Oh, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, man, I want to thank you for coming out. Man, it's my pleasure, man. Yeah, man, yeah. Get, go get some okra and shrimp. Make a little kubian. Oh, uh, calm down. <laughs> thank you. Man. Hey, man, no problem, man. Thank you for breaking, man. Y'all yeah. right. give it up for Floyd. We got we got one more young lady coming up. She's a singer. Matter of fact, this young lady, um, we thought she wasn't gonna be here tonight. She got picked um, for a role in the Super Bowl. She's gonna be performing. Uh, we'll let we'll let we'll let her uh, tell y'all. Y'all coming to the stage? Give it up for Miss Erica Fox. Have a seat, have a seat. All right. So, the thing for the Super Bowl. So unprofessional, huh? It's oh, okay, it's okay. <laughs> Can y'all hear me? Testing my check. So, the thing for the Super Bowl. Um, so, uh, during the Super Bowl, there's going to be 10 days leading up to the Super Bowl. It's Super Bowl Live, and it's actually on Discovery Green. Mm -hmm. There'll be uh, several acts performing throughout the city that's showcasing basically local talent of mm -hmm. Houston, Texas. Okay, cool. So, so yeah. how'd, you get, how'd you get on that? Audition for it. Just what? went out and, yeah, What'd you audition. have to do? <laughs> Not strip on the pole like a ah! <laughs> <laughs> date, but, um, no, just sang, performed um, okay. with the guitarist and we did a couple songs. You play so instruments too? I play trumpet a little. A trumpet? Mm -hmm. What? Well, you know I'm from Louisiana. So I oh, yeah, Shay, we got to turn no. on our accent. <laughs> That's right. I forgot you were from Louisiana down there. Yeah, so yeah. So how long you been here? Um, almost a year now. Oh, okay. Yeah. You're new. Yeah, I'm, I'm brand new. <laughs> what what part of Louisiana? I'm originally, I'm from Lafayette. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. You got a crumpet? Oh, yeah. You know I make the best crawfish in the world. Right? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh, yeah. We, I'm going to have to invite you. Well, you have to bring me, yeah, yeah, take me to one of your crawfish boils mm -hmm. so I can taste it. Uh, uh Crawfish what? Crawfish boils. Oh, okay. Or do you, or they say burls. Oh, yeah, there. yeah. Crawfish burls down there. <laughs> but, oh, of course. So how long have you been playing instruments and stuff? Well, I've been singing my entire life. Um, Since she was about two? Yeah, basically, yeah. Now, see, I mean, this, I'm, this is one of those stories. <laughs> one of those stories. But, yeah, for me, music's always been a part of my life. My dad, not a musician or a singer, but he just always really loved music. Mm -hmm. And every Tuesday, and I'm probably going to date myself, um, we used to go to the record store because that's when new releases would always come out. And I think still albums yeah. still drop on Tuesdays. Jeez. But um, every Tuesday, we would always go and pick up a new album. So, you know, mm -hmm. we'd listen to Stevie Wonder, who happens to be one of my favorite artists of all time. You know, uh, Smokey Robinson, the Supremes, just whatever was out that week, we would go. And so that love and appreciation for music really came from my dad. Yeah. And then I would take those albums, and in my time, whenever they didn't want to 
play with me. I'd go sing to one of the albums, and that's pretty much where it started. You know, music was my friend. It was my release. Yeah. It was my outlet. That's good. And so, yeah, I've been singing forever. So you, you kind of taught yourself? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. totally uh, uh, taught Wonder myself. Taught, well, taught. well, Stevie taught me, yeah. Uh, some uh, Whitney Houston taught me. Mariah taught me. I've, I've had some great mentors. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> yeah. That's good. Yeah. We put this on, and we got a couple of uh, things we need to. I'm sorry, I just wanted to say, you know, thank you, Silky, for doing a good show tonight. Oh, man. Thank you for doing a good show tonight. Thank you for doing a good show tonight. Baldwin baked goods. So they came by, they delivered it. He didn't even see him come in, but they delivered it and got him a nice, you know, nice cake. Oh, oh my God, look at this cake. Yes! Okay. Oh, yeah. Jeez. <laughs> I can't eat it. I got one plate, hold on, hold on. I can't eat that floor here. <laughs> To tell, tell him he's a maniac. Um, yes, yeah, I'm the first time doing this. And uh, y'all give it up for Kyle Blue for helping me out. Give it up for my wife, Kiki James, on the cameras and the lights and the mics. We're gonna get these mics right. These mics is sending me back, man. Uh, give it up for my nephew, Akili James, on the camera. Give it up for DJ Derail! Oh my god! Who made this? Y'all gotta eat some of this. I can't eat this by myself. Yes, I can. You like it? Sorry. Yeah! First time doing it, y'all. All right, thank y'all for coming out. DJ, bring us out. Yeah, yeah. 